Hi guys. Hi. Okay, so I'm starting officially now with a uh, recording. Good morning, good evening everyone. Uh, actually, I think that today's meeting uh, can be relatively short, at least from my perspective, because I don't have much to report uh, uh, to you. Uh, I'm still uh, um, trying. I'm, I'm still trying to to reach people being in our on our team officially on Slack uh, with question about a potential uh, their potential involvement. Uh, I need to figure out how many persons actually we have uh, who want uh, who want actively support us and uh, to work on a search engine. And uh, the only concern I have uh, in terms of organization uh, is how we can uh, integrate already now people working mostly on front end when we still are uh, deep in uh, back back end uh, work. Uh, because I think it, it may be issue because it's, I cannot ask somebody, you know, you are a cool front end guy, uh, but I, I maybe I will have something for you in two weeks. So I think it's something that I, I'm quite open to hear uh, your opinion on that, how we can do it uh, in terms of front end development in parallel to uh, a deep back end uh, development works. So that's, that's one thing uh, I have now an issue with. So. Any um, opinions? I have. I don't. I don't know if I have an opinion, but I can share my thoughts at least. Um, regarding front end, I think we're still at the phase of kind of figuring out what we're trying to collect in terms of even in the infrastructure, right? Like again, like those filters that we were talking about a few days ago, right? If the, once we collect all the filters we'll be looking for and things like that, then we could at least ask the front end because I don't think there's that many front end guys um, to start uh, at least sketching it out and mocking it up in terms of how we expect it to look like. Yep. Uh, yeah, there was a one person or two persons actually I have been talking uh, with who, were, um, who, who are actually uh, front end specialists and I wouldn't like to lose them uh, because uh, they, uh, they, they may feel uh, left uh, Standard, uh, without any assignments, without any contact with the rest of the team. So that actually that was that was that was my uh, only concern. I mean, for at least for now, uh, because uh, uh, the rest I think is more or less clear. If somebody has an opinion or uh, would like to uh, to express his her concern about it, okay, that's. Yeah, that's why I, I would like to talk about it. Uh, because the rest, I mean, like the, all other filters you uh, you mentioned now, Imran, it's uh, like it's something that will take also some some time, like one or two weeks. And I am also now like in in the process of uh, re-engaging people from from our team uh, to to reassigning things like uh, how how uh, who will work on V9, uh, who will work on Elasticsearch and and semantic search because I would like also to like to spread the whole task uh, among multiple persons. Uh, so that it's, it's, it will be not the case that a huge uh, part of the project uh, will, hinge, will hinge upon two or three persons working 24 hours, seven day, uh, on 24 on seven. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Lucas, yeah. If, you want to, if you want to hear my opinion, so yeah. for now, uh, so for, for a search engine, we have Kibana, uh, and this is a great tool actually to create some visualizations and to do some kind of front-end things. And you can export data according to your queries. So I think for search engine, it's uh, kind of enough for now. And I don't think it's uh, necessary to uh, ask people to do something more before we uh, connect other things. But for example, for... Uh, as packages, so now we have uh, people that are interested actually, uh, they have questions and uh, they would like to put all these questions in a 
database in a format that uh, will be uh, able um, actually to connect to our infrastructure afterwards. So I think it's a great opportunity actually to ask those people to work on this. And Abdul can, can uh, elaborate on this. I think. Okay. Yeah, and, so... Uh, Slava, oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go oh, ahead. okay. Um, it's a quick question. Uh, Slava, Kibana is, uh, only works with uh, Elasticsearch. That's right. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So if we were to have anything oh, else... Nice. Um, without Elasticsearch, then we would not be able to apply Kibana to it, right? As like a yeah, that's right, that's right. But but uh, I think uh, I think it's enough for now without building something new, because clearly we don't have yeah. specification and uh, even stakeholders. Yeah, yeah, I fully agree. And uh, we had that call with uh, Dr. Tayeb. Uh, who is leading 100 medical professionals on Kaggle to do the <coughs> literature review process. And truthfully, like even though he has 100 uh, people, there is no specifics in terms of like desired user interface or desired functionality, and it's pure exploration at this point. So we are kind of like whatever we present to them, it's the best way to reach that you know, further state of, of development. So whatever we can use that is already uh, built as a tool, that's the best way from my opinion. Okay, uh, so somebody else wanting to jump on, on that topic, on this topic actually. Uh, okay, um, because- Actually, uh, yeah. Lucas, sorry. Yeah, go um, ahead, Imran. Arthur, go ahead. Uh, regarding the, uh, because I think like, the end goal is that we want to have something that's usable for the public in terms of researchers. Is that correct? Correct. And the current uh, like interface or something that we would imagine to exist, uh, we actually got a request from Dr. Tayeb to, and uh, he he specifically asked us to put all of the things that his team created, which is like 80 questions that are not really like Kaggle questions because some of those are already outdated or too general. Um, he uh, asked us to, to put those on the web page, and I worked uh, this, um, this morning or, or uh, whatever in the past 24 hours to accomplish that. So basically we have uh, the list of CSVs that he provided. You can click on those, and that's the literature review results that doctors and medical professionals uh, created. And basically that's the same thing that you can see at the Kaggle contribution page, except it's easier to navigate and it's essentially something that we can keep uh, improving uh, without the, the blockers of, uh, you know, Kaggle as a platform not being the ideal place for this, because first of all, it's a very confusing platform for, <coughs> for medical professionals to navigate. And this is like the tables piece. And then there is interactive tables, which is uh, amazing job of Mike Honey to uh, do the, the quick uh, Power BI uh, for this. So this is kind of the, the current interface uh, that you can imagine the literature review process converging to. And obviously all of these columns are very unknown to us, like this, like hydrophobic or hydrophilic. And these things exist only in the, <coughs> in the mental models of the uh, researchers or medical professionals, but they all differ by interests, directions, and basically the things that we call an ontologies. And that was essentially the reason why, um, why I created um, that, <coughs> that first attempt at visualizing the structure of how we should approach the ontology task ideation and the team ideation. I'm sure it's confusing and it's not clear what I meant by this, but essentially I separated the, um, the, the layers of things that exist in, in ontology by metadata, by direction layer, which is the direction of research in a way, like some researchers are gonna be interested in treatments, some in drugs, some in vaccines, some in types of trials, and this is ultimately infinite uh, in reality. 
you know, here comes uh, Jeremy and Rose in terms of the molecular angle, and there are many more, which also produce much more stuff on the data layer. And the only way for me to kind of visualize that structure is Slack channels that are like team ontology dash something <coughs> and forming groups around those. Does this make sense in, in like at least a little bit? And uh, Apple, can, can you go back to uh, interface uh, a little bit? Yep. Yeah, so I, I want to explain <coughs> something. Uh, we are working on different projects and in one of European projects, uh, we have so-called European uh, question bank. And basically it's a list of questions. We have, I think like 5,000 questions. And the idea that every question should be linked to data sets. So this infrastructure was built by a uh, Gezius institution in Germany. And I think uh, it was built on Elasticsearch. So I can contact them and uh, they already have some, some basic infrastructure. So probably it's, it should be open source. So probably they can help them also to uh, do some input and we can reuse something from what they already have. Okay. And That's great. Yeah. I mean, I this was built just in less than 24 hours. And it's yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we, we, this is why uh, I'm actually uh, suggesting to contact uh, people that already spent like three years to build this Perfect. infrastructure. Yeah. Um, so regarding um, Archer, that kind of that web app you showed, it seems like um, also that's kind of aligning with what uh, Jeremy's looking to do, which is looking at basically how different factors and their causality in terms of the end goal of uh, COVID-19. Is that, am I correct in uh, that statement? Correct you a little bit here because this is essentially like, this is, a, objective knowledge extraction from the data done by medical experts, but it doesn't apply any causality or there is no casual, casual, uh, casual inference involved in, in this process. And like there might be as a column, you know, that looks more like ca casually, which is, you know, this drug or something mentioned in this paper inhibits IL-6 or, you know, uh, stops the virus from binding, <coughs> binding to receptor and things like that. But that's a way, way more complex task that I don't believe we'll be able to approach from, you know, infrastructure or front end point of view, unless teams like Jeremy's will basically build something that we can quickly integrate. Does it make sense? And, yep. And that's, uh, that's what they're looking to do. So, because like, I think over the past few days, we were just kind of just trying to look at which direction we're gonna go, right? In terms of how to build that infrastructure and also how to tackle the clear use case, which is uh, uh, Jeremy's causal inference. Yep, correct. And as, as you can see, I, I only had time to expand on the, on, the, on the ontology side because that's the one that we're having the most kind of confusion about just simply because Slava is, you know, handling the data infrastructure and he does this without, you know, uh, much structure because it exists in, in his brains. But essentially we will need to scale him too. And that's what we will start, you know, creating different uh, sub channels for, for this. Uh, after, uh, we are working also on documentation for data infrastructure and services. <laughs> so, uh, our idea, I think I already mentioned that we already started uh, to use uh, continuous integration pipelines. So nice. we are trying to, to put some experimental stuff. And <coughs> to be honest, some software like uh, Bell and uh, Hypothesis is not really kind of production system that you can scale up, but we can help. We can definitely, definitely help to build uh, pipelines uh, for Jenkins, for GitLab, and uh, we can help them to scale this uh, uh, infrastructure for us as a user sense, we can reuse in our own, uh, like Google Cloud or Amazon or wherever we want to deploy it. Yeah, so, I, I would actually, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so, so we, are, we already started to work on it and uh, there is uh, like first documentation draft already available and uh, <coughs> I hope to publish it uh, like probably next week. Unfortunately, I, I, I have to go home uh, to the Netherlands from Spain and I will be not available for a few days. 
And uh, but yeah, next week uh, I think uh, we we can already publish something, and uh, I'm pretty sure you, uh, people will have a lot of questions. So we're ready to answer them. And in terms of like what I mentioned, in terms of branching out the data infrastructure, I also because here's here comes the question. Since we only have four angles, and I think that's plenty already. Here comes the question: Where does the actual curation, annotation, and things like that fit? And from my understanding, it fits in data infrastructure because essentially. Yeah, so go ahead. That's exactly <coughs> correct. So basically, you can see data infrastructure as a kind of rails, and uh, so it's basically horizontal thing, and all uh, vertical things basically are uh, uh, tracks that doing something uh, research specific. This is how I see it, and. Yeah. Uh, Makes sense. Uh, yeah, so, so if we will follow this approach, we'll be able to, uh, <coughs> like I already said, to answer different questions uh, with the same uh, uh, data infrastructure. Cool. Aslav, I have a quick question for you. Um, regarding all these attributes that we're looking to kind of extract, uh, what would be the best way to kind of, quote unquote, deploy? Would we just add these fields to the V9, V6, V7 data set, or would, should we expose them as like more of an API? And what kind of attributes you want to add? Like for example, um, uh, what I'm working on, which is uh, study design, right? Once we have a model to classify all of the labels for the paper, should we, yep. should I just run it through the entire data set and just label them and provide that to you, or would it be better to? So, so the the better way uh, uh, to create some sample and uh, create a Jupyter notebook that uh, will uh, execute your use case, and uh, this is something for us to investigate how to create a pipeline that will be uh, uh, executing the same um, uh, process with uh, high performance, uh, like parallel computing and this kind of stuff. And uh, after we'll be, uh, execute your uh, use case and we'll scale to execute on the whole uh, collection. So this is the idea. Like from something small, but to get it executed like in 100 times uh, faster. And after we'll apply the same, the, the same pipeline uh, for a complete collection and uh, this is how we'll build new things, new components to this. So kind of building a, a sandbox, you know, where we can run it very quickly. Yeah, yeah. So, like so sand, sand, that's right. So, it, uh, so from Jupyter Notebook, we'll create sandbox. We'll try and we'll understand that all things uh, are the same and uh, we, we can get uh, expected results. And after we can scale up this continuous integration, this, uh, you know, all this production stuff. I okay. think, yeah, it's, it sounds probably uh, complex, but, uh, uh, well, personally, I have quite, quite a lot of experience in building pi uh, production pipelines, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's feasible to, uh, to get. Can we put up Arthur's diagram again? Uh, sure. Uh, give me a second. It, it's also in the, in the search. Uh, yeah. Engine. I guess I was just wondering if we can look at it. I have too many channels but <laughs> yep um. <coughs> okay so, so this is splitting out the ontology engine away from data structure or from data infrastructure and today it seems like some of that is in data infrastructure is that like the the work that brandon did with umls and here's where i'm failing to <coughs> you know visualize that but like that's kind of where we're stuck I think right now and I think this yeah. looks great right it's just kind of getting a little bit more clarity about this it's, it feels like we're a few of us at least are kind of stuck on what that looks like but, but yeah. well, I think and, I can explain I can yeah explain. go ahead so, so basically uh, assuming uh, you understand what I mean <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so basically knowledge, uh, you can see knowledge graph as, as RDF uh, I think you know what what RDF right is right. Uh, so it's one big data set. Let's say <laughs> kind of XML with specific uh, attributes, and uh, this XML is actually uh, preserved. Will be preserved in our data infrastructure. And if you want to run ontology engine, uh, we will just start uh, different endpoints 
and will load this uh, fuel into Anthology Engine, and you can create it. And this is how you can create new links, and you can do more stuff uh, with uh, Knowledge Graph. And funnel so, back to the data infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I hope it's clear. <coughs> Lava, the way yeah. you're describing it to me, it sounds like the knowledge graph is in the data infrastructure, whereas uh, okay. I think the, the knowledge graph is in the discovery engine. No? No, discovery engine is, uh, is uh, just a kind of front end that allows to query a knowledge graph. Kind of like an inference engine. Yeah. Okay, so so we we have data infrastructure and a knowledge. Sorry, we have the data and a knowledge graph within the data infrastructure, and then we're saying that we're going to do what with ontologies at the side. Okay, so <laughs> I'll try to explain again. So we have fuel somewhere, and uh, fuel uh, will be deli delivered to petrol station, and this petrol fuel, station. Can we actually, talk specifically fuel being being a data set? Four nineteen, for example. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so so <laughs> so. Uh, That's a good suggestion, uh, by the way, because I do feel like we keep using a lot of analogies, but we miss the context. Yeah. So so uh, we have. <laughs> other fuel coming from other directions like annotations. Uh, all these statements from uh, hypothesis will be turned to uh, triples and uh, will go also to, uh, uh, to this ontology engine. And uh, so we will so you're have saying data. Ontology, uh, sorry, can I ask a question already? Yeah? You're saying ontology engine comes after the knowledge graph has already been created. I actually view it as a cumulative thing. Like you can't. I do too. Data. But this is what this is where I think we're stuck. Uh, and because it's 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 a two way thing, and it's actually like temporal relationship, and that's why I think uh, we're getting stuck on this. Because at one point of time, yes, it's separate, and the second point of time, it fills fills in uh, back into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess I'm just <coughs> asking you to to describe that because I think we have two different. Yeah, I think maybe maybe, two different ideas of what that looks like. Yeah, what I'm hearing Slava say sounds different than what you and I are thinking. I think I don't know. Let's yeah, try again. I, <laughs> uh, I I think we we can try to write kind of a descriptive uh, form like in text because obviously the visuals they are good for kind of the high level, but to describe this <coughs> arrow relationship or like two way relationship. We actually need kind of a wall of text that explains in examples like here comes the chord 19 uh, here's what ontology engine that is built for molecular direction does to chord 19 here is how it produces the knowledge graph and here is how you know that knowledge graph further on uh, improves an ontology engine that is molecular direction specific yeah I think that will help us all yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just, try to work just, on, on that today. Yeah, so just for your understanding, Anthology Engine is not like one engine. It's a distributed network of different uh, endpoints, let's say, different engines. with different ontology, basically. I understand. Yeah, I guess that's my point. <laughs> okay, feel, so like, like, like uh, one, one... If we create one the has... knowledge graph before the ontology, that's a problem. The ontology needs to be integrated into the creation of the knowledge graph. That's yeah, my... we're on the same page. Okay, great. I'll, okay. I'll try to describe that. Okay, uh, <coughs> I think because we are slowly, uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but I think that's the best ahead. way uh, proposed already, I think by, by, by uh, Arthur, is to put now a more uh, elaborated version of this conversation on paper. On, on your screen so that uh, we can uh, dive into some details because otherwise it's like when we keep talking uh, with metaphors and analogies, uh, we can spend the whole night or day uh, about it. I mean, like, uh, I think that's the best way just to put some examples how it will work for all parts, uh, all parties. Uh, and uh, yeah, and um, I think it's the best way to continue this um, this part of conversation on Slack or on our in, in our uh, design uh, drafts uh, on Google uh, Drive. 
um, because we are slowly uh, running out of time. And I would like to keep those uh, those meetings 30 minutes long because it's like it's a sustainable amount of time to uh, so that other people can then uh, watch uh, watch us on on YouTube. And if you have one hour meeting, that no one will will go through it. So I think that 30 minutes is something that we can, uh, on the one hand compress a lot of information on the other hand it's still uh, accessible and and tenable for for other uh, members of, of our team and uh, there are may maybe some other questions uh, different than uh, this uh, let's say uh, relation between ontology uh, engines and and uh, and uh, database any other questions? Um, okay, so, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I would just kind of want to reiterate. I probably sound like a broken record at this point, but uh, yes, to direct everyone to the roster. So at least we have an idea of what everyone wants to work on looking at skills and stuff like that. So just yeah, so we I'm, have an idea of. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. I'm just, I, today I started to. Uh, to uh, message people on on Slack so that I have a, di a direct connection with everyone who, who wants to do something with us, um, and now I'm just gathering like re like re-engaging people uh, in in our work, and it takes time because I would like to uh, to talk with everyone uh, one on one because the like the posting messages in 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 the channel, uh, like I don't think it's the most uh, like Okay, you can uh, uh, reach people somehow, but I think the, uh, a better way is a direct approach, one-to-one uh, -one, uh, with private message. If this person uh, would like to join or not, or uh, he, she is already busy with other stuff. You see my point? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay, yeah, so just, so I'm in process of that and you, have, you are 100% right. We need a kind of a, um, updated schedule, uh, uh, who, what, uh, for how long, and when, more or less, something like that. Okay, so I think that we have, uh, for today we are done. Thank you very much for uh, your presence, and I I hope we can uh, we can uh, text each other on Slack, and uh, yeah, and um, elaborate uh, all the things that uh, have been said uh, today, and have a Good day or good night, depending on your time zone. So, as always. Thanks, Gush. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you.